This fact that when you apply a force, an object responds by accelerating um, was laid out for the first time about 300 years ago or so um, by Isaac Newton. And it's such an important idea. It's the way we understand how objects move. Let's get a little bit more quantitative, because all I've said right now is that force causes accelerations. How much? Right? What are the numbers? Well, the first thing that we might do would be to measure the acceleration with a certain force. And then we could double the force or increase it. So Alan, if you could add some more paper clips. So once again, we're going to start from rest. And now we've got more force. And let's see what happens. It's a much larger acceleration. If you measure carefully, you will see, you will measure that the acceleration increases. And if you measure the force and you measure the acceleration, you'll discover that acceleration is proportional to the force. You have to make the measurements. It's not obvious intuitively, but it's correct. If you double the force, you double the acceleration. It's quantitative. If you go not on this little one-dimensional air track, but onto an air hockey table, you'll discover that the acceleration vector is proportional to the force vector. The direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the force that you apply. So that's one observation that Newton made. And then you could ask another question. So do all objects accelerate the same if they have the same force? Now here's my object again. And uh, let me change the object by adding some mass to it. So this is a more massive object. I'm going to keep the force the same. And let's watch what happens. It is accelerating. It starts at rest and begins to go faster and faster. Here it's slowing down, comes to a halt, turns around. It's constant acceleration. But it's a different acceleration. It was clearly a much smaller acceleration than before. So apparently, acceleration depends on how massive the object is. Makes sense? And it goes inversely. It's not intuitively obvious, I think, philosophically, that it has to be exactly 1 over m. But if you double the mass and you measure the acceleration, it's exactly half the acceleration. So this proportionality really is observed in the laboratory. I can combine these two and say that acceleration is proportional to f over m. And let me, in fact, write it like this, a equals f over m. Now, how do I know I can write an equal sign here? First of all, you have to experimentally convince yourself that acceleration depends on nothing else, no other details besides force and mass. I have a system of units. I've already calibrated masses. They're measured in kilograms. I already have a system of units. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. That's already well defined. But remember, my force meter wasn't yet calibrated. I could put those tick marks wherever I want. I can pick the unit of force so that this becomes an equal sign rather than having some constant out front. So let me rewrite this equation by multiplying through by m. It's such an important equation of physics. Newton called it his second law. Uh, remember, the first law was the statement that an object at rest remains at rest. An object in motion remains in motion. This is related to the first law, but it's so much deeper. It tells us that when you apply a force to an object, the object will accelerate. So this is explaining the why of motion. Why do things accelerate? Because you push on them or you pull on them. And it's quantitative. If you know what the mass is, you can measure the acceleration. What are the units? I told you that I'm going to define the unit of the unit of force, so that this is an equal sign, that means that the unit of force, we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it the Newton, abbreviated with a capital N. One Newton should equal to, according to this equation, one kilogram times one meter per second squared. So if you push on one kilogram with one Newton of force, remember that's a fairly small amount of force, I can now purchase a scale that's been calibrated in Newtons. And uh, here we go. One Newton is the first tick mark. That's not very much of a force. It's very easy. If I apply that much force to an object on an air track, it will accelerate 
with an acceleration of one meter per second squared, F equals to ma. This equation is the centerpiece of physics one. We're going to be studying it and trying to understand it and use it in problems. And the big idea here is when you push or pull on an object, that's the left-hand side of this equation. It corresponds to physical tugs. The right-hand side is a description of motion. In particular, acceleration is kinematics. How is the velocity changing with time? So the right-hand side describes the motion. It tells you what happens when you apply a force. The mass is the proportionality constant. Big, massive things are sluggish. If you've got a big mass, for a given force, you'll have a small acceleration. We saw it here, it makes sense. If you have a, a tank and you apply a little force to it, it's not going to accelerate very much. If you swat a mosquito with a tiny mass, a given force will make it accelerate like crazy. So we'll be looking at this formula and doing lots of examples to come up. It really is the linchpin of this course.